Hello everyone, my name is Taylor White and today I'm going to be talking about localization, specifically in relation to autonomous vehicles and the Google driverless car. Now localization is how a vehicle recognizes itself in space or its location in space. Now a while back I wrote this research paper on localization. Specifically the coding project that I'm going to be showing you today is in relation to particle filters. Now particle filters are a specific type of localization. It's a way for the robot to figure out where it is within a measured space. So there's a map here. The robot knows the map and it sends out signals. And each one of these radar signals tells how far away it is from any given point that it can read. And every one of these little red dots here represents a potential location for that robot. And each one of these red dots is actually also sending out signals in every direction, figuring out where it is from every point on the map that it can see. Now, what happens is every so often the population of these particles are going to regenerate. And each one of these particles is scored on an evaluation on how similar its measurements are to that of the robot. Now, because the, ro the particles over here are going to have much similar measurements to that of the robot, the majority of these particles are going to respawn here and going to provide us with a good estimate as to our location. So I've written a piece of code that depicts this, as you've seen here. So each one of the little red dots is a robot, and this little blue guy down here is our robot Tupac. So every one of these measures every point of interest that's on the map. As you can see, there are no points of interest at the moment. I'll drop one here in a second. But because there is no point of interest, they have no idea where they are within the map. That's why you see this randomness moving around. This is known as the state of mass confusion, as in no point in this whole area is more likely to be our location than any other point. Now once you start to see clustering, which will happen when I drop the first point of interest, you'll see that there are going to be very good guesses, or going to be better guesses, as to where the robot is in space. Now since I'm going to drop only one point, you're going to notice that the particles will surround it in an arc that is equivalent to the distance that measure, distance measured by a robot Tupac. So I'll do that now. So as you can see, if you saw quickly, that they're lining in an arc-like fashion from the robot. Each one of these vectors, it's important to note, is actually not have anything to do with the measurement at the moment because we are on radar mode rather than what I'm calling sonar mode where each vector sends out and is measured by the vectors. I've actually haven't written that to be as efficient and that's why I'm using this mode as, instead. So the way this mode works is that every point of interest that's on the map corresponds to a measurement from each one of these particles and robot. And again, that's how these particles are measured as to who is going to be repopulated. Now I'm going to switch to vector mode or sonar mode. As you can see on the left hand side here it's measured by rays and this is a much more accurate method of how localization really works because I don't necessarily know where every block is in, on the planet. Instead I can only measure the ones that I'm next to. Now you'll notice that since there's only two blocks it's actually only receiving these measurements from each one of these two rays and it's not quite as accurate. Now for efficiency purposes in this video, I'm going to spend most of my time into in radar mode. Now you'll notice that every so often there's these particles that show up seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Now what those represent are a genetic mutation. It's possible that there's a poor guess as to where our robot is. So if there ever is a group, specifically when I only have one of these, there ever seems to be a couple of groups or groups that get away from our robot. If there is another particle that mutates that happens to be very close to our robot, it'll actually allow this, this group to repopulate back on the right location. Because it's possible that for whatever reason this, there's a huge population over here and nothing on my robot. So the mutations allow for some amount of um, mutability. Now, if I 
as you can see, once I add a second measurement, it already things become much more accurate. And the whole solution actually gets scored over here in the top right hand corner based on the amount of air, the average air per particle. So I have these controls, ray counts, um, sense noise, and those will all start to make sense here in a second. So if I add rays, since I am in radar mode rather than sonar mode or vector mode, they actually don't really mean anything at the moment. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. However, one key thing to note is that, let's get him out of this block here. These, the sense noise and movement noise are particularly important. So sense noise represents the possibility that our robot is taking a bad measurement. So as, as this is a simulation, I'm able to raise and lower sense noise as needed, and I'm going to do that now. Now you'll start to notice that each of these particles seems to get away from the robot more and more as the sense noise goes up. Where at, and this can also be noted in numbers by looking at the score, solution score. So obviously in a perfect world we would have zero sense noise but that just is not the case. Which is why you have to have all these particles that average out and tell us where the robot might be. Secondly, there's move noise. So I may think that I'm taking a step, which is around one foot long or 12 inches long. However, it's possible that there is a standard deviation from that 12 inches. Let's say it's two inches, as noted here. I can raise and lower that, which will also affect on how accurate the particles are if, I, if I'm unsure as to how far I'm stepping. And the particles are as well. So, so those are two huge factors. Turn noise is also important that I may turn more than I anticipated, uh, but I'm not going to focus too much on that. So that is a visualization of particle filters. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. You can actually check out the whole project on taylorchasewhite.com, my GitHub account, github.com slash taylorchasewhite or my YouTube account to see this video, which you're most likely watching it on, youtube.com slash tdog1 million. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to hear back from you.